Hey guys, how you doing? Dr. Shook here. So um, I got this idea this morning and what I'm going to try to do is I'm getting ready to use the sauna, but one of the things I like to do before I use a sauna is I exercise some way, somehow. And um, really the sauna, the reason I use it, one of the main reasons is for detoxification of chemicals from my body. And I eliminate those through sweating. Most of those chemicals are stored in your fat cells. So <clears throat> if you can exercise a few minutes <clears throat> excuse me, a few minutes before using the sauna and you can cause some uh, some breakdown of the fat cells. You can actually liberate some of those chemicals into the bloodstream and better detoxify them. So some people will also combine that with niacin and they'll use niacin in combination with um, pre-exercise or, or pre-sauna exercise. And the niacin will, if you've ever used niacin, it will cause, in high enough doses, it will cause a flush and make your skin pink up and that will bring the blood closer to the skin so that when you sweat you can get more of those chemicals out okay so um, one of the things i'm going to do is i want to talk to you guys for a few minutes about um, the causes of autoimmunity because i decided that I was, with some of these videos these live videos i was going to do some short videos and that and that i was going to um, i wanted to cover some of the basics before i got into more specifics uh, because the thing is that most people that follow me, they have an autoimmune thyroid condition. And because we know most people that are hypothyroid have an autoimmune condition, Hashimoto's, and then other people have Graves, and there's a lot of people that have all kinds of autoimmune conditions that do follow me because that's what I primarily do. I work with autoimmunity <clears throat> and Hashimoto's because it's very, very prevalent. So anyway, what I wanna talk about are some of the drivers of, of autoimmunity. And I'm going to attempt to do this while I'm on the treadmill. If you guys, I might be able to to uh, take a, a glimpse and look down at some of your comments. Um, if you can't hear me because of the, the noise, let me know and I'll see what I can do. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna start walking. Let's talk about the, um, let's talk about the, uh, some of the drivers of autoimmunity, okay? It's a really important concept, things that you need to know about so that you can understand like how, if I'm autoimmune, what are the things that I might wanna be consider doing to try and dampen the autoimmune process, okay? Hey Doreen, good morning. Nice to see you. I'm gonna try and walk. Just let me know if it's too loud, because it gets loud. <clears throat> so I'm kind of a, a little bit away from you here too, so I don't know if you can hear me. It's kind of noisy, so just let me know if you can't hear me. But um, what I want to talk about today was really I wanted to share with you guys the drivers of autoimmunity. And one of the things with like the drivers of autoimmunity is that. There, there are primarily three different categories that we look at. The first category is gonna be food sensitivities, right? So not anaphylactic responses, right? Anaphylaxis would be, it's a different type of immune response. That's primarily what your, what your doctors are gonna check, antibodies. That's anaphylactic. That's, that is not what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to look at IgA, IgG antibody responses to food proteins, okay? Hey guys, I guess I'm back. Looks like my signal dropped, which was kind of unusual, but um, it does say that my connection's weak, so we'll do what we can. Um, I just want to talk to you guys. Uh, let me, let me um, just kind of summarize this so it doesn't take forever. So when we're looking at autoimmunity, we want to address partially digested food proteins, okay? So those are called food, those are peptides or portions of the food protein that can travel through your digestive tract wall and stimulate an immune response. That can exacerbate the immune system and promote autoimmunity, okay? We find that all the time. That's why a lot of people go on diets like autoimmune paleo because those diets remove a lot of the very common food sensitivities. Now, when you remove those from your diet, a lot of times people can feel better and, that, and those, those types of diets also have higher nutrient density, which a lot of people are eating foods that are void of nutrients. Really, they're, they're very low in nutrients and high in calories. Diets like the autoimmune paleo diet and some of these other more common diets that are out there are very high in nutrient density, so they're very, they're very nutri nutritious, but they're lower in calories. They're much better for you because they're really whole foods, more, more whole foods. Okay, so uh, food proteins, partially digested food proteins is number one category of things that are going to promote um, autoimmunity. Uh, number two is going to be chronic infections. Chronic infections can be bacteria, 
we find a lot of times chronic bacterial infections in the digestive tract that are asymptomatic, meaning there's no symptoms at all. Um, so let's talk about bacteria. Um, you can have uh, fungus or fungal overgrowths. You can have that in the GI tract. Um, they can, there can be other places as well. Uh, you can find parasites. Um, you know, probably one in 10 of the uh, stool panels that we have done, we find some kind of parasite. And then, um, you know, uh, beyond that, you're looking at, at viruses, uh, different types of viruses that are very common. And then um, vector-borne diseases, diseases as well, like uh, Lyme disease, things like that, are, are things that, that can stimulate a, an immune response. So <clears throat> that's the second category, right? So category one is going to be uh, partially digested food proteins. You're going to trigger an immune response. If you get that out of your environment, it tends to improve the autoimmunity. And this doesn't matter if you have Hashimoto's or Graves or rheumatoid arthritis or whatever the autoimmune condition is. The mechanisms are going to be similar. It's going, you're going to, you know, a lot of times it's this reactivity to partially digested food proteins, chronic infections, and then the third category is going, going to be environmental chemicals. Now, as far as environmental chemicals go, it is um, environmental chemicals. We know things like, so Datis Karazian, who's one of my mentors and uh, teachers. I've been studying his work for over 10 years. Uh, I, everything that he does, I listen to and I learn. And he was just appointed, he was, Datis was just appointed a researcher, as a researcher at Harvard. And I think he's in the neuroscience or, or department, I, and I'm not positive, but it was amazing honor, you know, and, and, and you can see why when you study his work. But um, I've studied most of the things that, that I follow and that I do follow Datis's work very, very closely. Um, and, and he just published, so we're talking about environmental chemicals, the third category of things that promote autoimmunity are going to be environmental chemicals. So these environmental chemicals, he just published, just, it was just published, I and mean, we've kind of known about it, some of us that follow his work and that know, um, you know, have some communication with him and, and other people that, that he knows. We were aware of this uh, probably a year and a half or two years ago, that BPA and that some of the preliminary the preliminary findings were coming out, like BPA, and some of these plastics in the environment are actually contributing factors to like multiple sclerosis. So, which is an autoimmune uh, condition. There's a there's published literature. This just this came out. It was a, an unbelievable paper, and it just goes to show you that there are a lot of things that can promote an immune response, and these immune responses can can perpetuate or trigger autoimmunity. And it's really, you know, that whole mechanism, people are like, well, why would that occur? Why would foods, why would infections, why would environmental chemicals promote an autoimmune condition? How is that possible? And that's really, that's really possible because of, uh, because of um, this concept called cross-reactivity. And it's basically where these things, these foods, infections, or chemicals, they have a molecular structure. So if you could look at their, the molecule and you don't really have to know exactly what that means. You just the shape and structure of the environmental chemical or the bacteria or the food protein, it could look a lot like your own tissue, right? Like your thyroid tissue. Uh, and if it looks enough like your thyroid tissue, when your immune system responds to this foreign thing, right? To this food protein, this let's say bacteria or virus, viral infection, or it responds to uh, to an environmental chemical, it can it'll produce you know, produce an immune response against it. And what that means is basically you make antibodies, which are like sticky notes that float through the bloodstream and stick to the bad stuff, or stick to the foreign things, the things that your immune system does not recognize and that your body wants to eliminate. And these antibodies will stick to it. And the way that they know that that thing is foreign and that, and that they can adhere to, let's say BPA, right, the plastic we're, we're talking about here, is because the immune system sees the, the shape of it, the, the molecular structure. And if your own tissues, your nervous system, the, the, the coating of your, your um, spinal cord or brain, which is myelin, it's a, it's a covering, if it, if it looks enough like that BPA, then those antibodies may attach themselves to your own tissue and, and just, just because it's similar in structure. It's like mistaken identity. Now that's called cross-reactivity. So these are the things that drive and so the same thing happens we you know we think there's lots and lots of things that cause cross reactivity so we have to obviously identify those remove them from the person's environment 
and then focus on improving immune regulation and trying to build tolerance to these things again. Like build tolerance. If you're reacting to foods, we try to get all that stuff out, heal the barrier systems of the body. So one of the main ones we, we know you hear a lot about is leaky gut, right? You hear this, this term, like whatever that means, it's, uh, it strikes up a lot of imagery in your head anyway as far as like uh, you know, holes in your digestive tract. But it's really just where your, your, your small intestine lets uh, things through it into the bloodstream that trigger an immune response. So when you're trying to dampen autoimmunity, you've got to identify what is causing the problem. I mean, that's... And you can do a lot of stuff on your own to see what kind of impact like food will have, like with an autoimmune paleo diet. You can do things like that, and, and those work, that works so well for a lot of people. It's, you know, it's really um, one of the best things that, that I think we've discovered as a tool to help people help themselves is something like that, like a, like a diet, because it answers and it can address a lot of really, really common problems, um, like, like poor food um, nutrition density. Like, you know, that's a very, very uh, big issue with processed foods. And it also, you know, those types of diets, they remove a lot of the common food food proteins that people react to. So anyway, <clears throat> um, what I want to do is just share that with you guys. That's one of the things you really need to focus on doing if you want to get your autoimmunity under control. And that's, you know, that's kind of what we do in practice. If, if someone, you know, people we have, con I do consultations with people that are, they're free actually. We do like free 15 minutes with people. We do, I try to do one per day. And that's, end up, that's what I end up telling people like every time I talk to them. Have, you know, we find out where they are. A lot of people are in different places. And if they, you haven't tried a dietary approach, you, you can, you know, something you can try that's completely free and unique to you is like an autoimmune paleo diet. That's a perfectly reasonable thing you can do on your own. Uh, we, you know, I have a, a program that we do for Hashimoto's. It includes diet and lifestyle and some stuff like that. But you can try AIP on your, on your own, and that's completely free, and that's a very valuable tool. Um, <clears throat> What else? What else? So those are the three categories, right? Food proteins, chronic infections, and, um, and environmental chemicals. And obviously, if you identify those things, there are slightly different strategies for each one of them. You, you want to try to remove it from, your, uh, remove it from your, your diet, if at all possible. And then you want to remove it from your environment, if it's chemical. And if it's a bacteria, kill it. If it's a fungus, kill it. If it's a parasite, kill it, because you want to get rid of it. And if it's a virus, you really have to focus on getting the immune system as healthy as possible. And there are, there are herbs and things that you can take to try and dampen the viral replication if, it's, if you're actively replicating the virus. But just know that with viruses, we all live with them. And under times of stress, they're going to become more active. So, you know, a lot of these, these problems, you know, our goal is to, like, get them as good as we can, right? Get you as healthy as possible so that you're, you're not symptomatic, so that you can live a vibrant and a healthy life. But you just got to know, like it happens with me too, our, our health kind of will wax and wane. We, we get better and we have, you know, ebbs and flows. We, we feel better and then we can have these flare-ups. And a lot of things can trigger that, you know, um, like with a virus, for example. If you're, you, We all live with the viruses. And it's kind of, I guess, a good example that's visible is if, you know, someone that has cold sores, right? That's, that's the herpes simplex virus. And so that's not, that's not something the person lives with it their entire life, but they have episodes where it flares up. Well, that virus will become active typically under times of stress when the immune system is suppressed. And then the, the virus will start replicating. It will work its way to the end of the nerve, like say at the lip, and it will, it will create the tissue destruction and you'll see the ulcer that forms, right? Well, that's a visual way to understand kind of how these viruses can, can become active. And we all live with them. Um, they can just, if your immune system is suppressed, they can definitely become more active and start more uh, actively virally uh, replicating and that can create more problems for you so the goal is is that you can't get rid of the virus but what you can do is focus on everything get every get the person systemically as healthy as possible right this is the goal get them as systemically as healthy as possible and that means you know nutrition good um, good nutrition good diet balancing blood sugar addressing um, if there's anemia whether they can't carry oxygen efficiently you've got to address that and make sure they can carry oxygen um, because that's essential for every cell and every in, in every every person's body. It has you have to have oxygen. Making sure that there's not high levels of, of inflammation. Checking things like homocysteine, C-reactive protein. These are all really really important, like basic foundational chemistry that has to be addressed if you're going to be systemically healthy. And then you know there's a lot of other things we can go beyond that. Um, but the goal is get systemically healthy so that your immune system and your body can better 
can better regulate itself and better dampen and, and, and handle some of these chronic viral infections that are there. So um, I hope that's helpful, but um, I've gone on um, quite a bit, I know. Uh, I've, I've gotta, I'm going to try to work out again. I, I turned off the treadmill because it seemed to. I'm kind of curious if it wasn't interrupting somehow with my signal. Um, but uh, that's, all, that's what I want to talk about. I've gone a little bit longer than I want to go on this video. Um, my sauna's up to 145 degrees, and I need to exercise just a little bit before I get in there. If you guys didn't don't understand that, I talked about it in the very beginning, the benefit of uh, exercising. Yeah. Hey, Melanie. Good to see you. I like I use the Pelican water uh, system too. I've got a reverse osmosis. Um, hey, Vivian. Yeah, I like um, like as Melanie said. I like the uh, I really really like Pelican. You can just Google it, Pelican water systems. Uh, it's one that, that I like. I mean, and there there's a, there are a lot out there that you can look at, but Pelican's pretty good. I like the reverse osmosis systems. That's that's what I prefer. Hey Rose. Hi from across the pond. <laughs> you're welcome, Doreen. Hey, Melanie, how are you doing? Hope you're doing better. Um, anyway, you guys, you know, just um, just just know that that there's a there's a, this, these these things are so complex. If I mean, if I could tell you guys the magic solution for each person, I man, I would do it in a heartbeat. I just don't I don't know because everyone is different, and you know, even even when I do all the testing in the world on people, right? We do, we do just unreal, um, very in-depth and thorough testing. It's, I mean, a lot of times that does reveal things we didn't know and it helps us to put together more specific plans. But sometimes, even sometimes with that, people aren't like, you know, it's not like a, a miraculous thing. And that just goes to show you how complex the body is. You can, sometimes you can do everything right and it's just, it's still something's missing. And that's just because we don't know everything, you know, just science has, we have limit, limitations. But one thing that you can always kind of follow as just a, a, a rule of thumb is, I think if you, if you try to live and eat and, um, and do things in a way that's more congruent, you know, with, just think, like, how do you think as human beings we were intended to, to interact with, with our environment, right? Like, um, we, we were probably intended, what I mean here is like things like intended to eat whole foods that come from the earth, right? Not processed man-made stuff, not artificial sweeteners, not additives, not artificial food colorings. Those are all things that are man-made. The more man-made stuff we do in our life, like, like this, like we're on these phones right now or we're on our computer and we've got these magnetic fields being, that are being put off from these phones. There's paint on, these, on the walls. There's, I mean, there's just all kinds of conveniences that we have that make our life easier, but they're probably in a lot of ways affecting us and, and harming our physiology. We just don't know, you know, we just don't know right now. So you do the best that you can, right? That's what you do. You do the best that you possibly can. You, um, you try to stay as positive as possible. You believe in yourself. You find reasons why you, uh, you want to, you want to be healthy. And you, you remind yourself of those daily. You know that's why I journal and stuff when I wake up, and and I always think about um, what I'm. I always think about what I'm grateful for first thing. Um, I use the five minute journal. It's a great journal. It's really easy to kind of guide you as well. So it's not just a blank sheet of paper. But um, so I talk about what I'm grateful for, and then uh, what you know what would make today great. And at the end of the day, I talk. I, I journal a little bit on um, three great things that happened today, and then how I could have made it better. And it really helps me to put things in perspective. Like, you know what? My number one thing just about every day is, is, um, you know, what are, what, what are you grateful for? And I'm grateful for the opportunity of today. I mean, think about that for a second. I mean, just think about that. I mean, it's so, we take that for granted so much that today we have a chance to actually breathe and to live. So many people don't. And even when it's really, really bad, we still have something that a lot of people don't have and will never have. And you don't know when that, that will be taken away. So, um, you know, the opportunity of today is big for me. So I, I try to make the best of it and um, just try to, I don't know, help, help people help themselves and um, in, enjoy it while we, while we still have, have, uh, have the opportunity to, to live and breathe another day, I'll say. So anyway, going on a lot. Um, I'm going to try, if you guys, whatever you're, you're thinking about um, 
topics and things that you want me to talk about, I mean, just, just comment and let me know. If you like these videos, this one's gone a long time. Uh, you just, if, if you would, if you like these videos, then share them for me. If you don't like them, then I won't record any more like this, okay? But I'm, right now I'm trying to hit some of the basic things that a lot of people need to know because there's so many new people that are finding, uh, finding me in my office and, and I'm trying to make sure that you understand like where to kind of start, right? So, um, really if you're having problems, you need someone to do some investigation. Uh, if you're having thyroid related issues, then it's most likely that you're that you're having um, auto you have autoimmunity against your thyroid like Hashimoto's most common autoimmune condition and you probably need some antibodies checked uh, thyroid thyroid antibodies checked if you um, and then if if you know you're autoimmune like what do you do well that's where you that's where you've got to start um, that's where you've really got to start looking at the drivers of autoimmunity, which is what we talked about in this video and there's a lot of things you can do on your own but there are a lot of things that you can do. That are that are testing and and you know so there's, there's there's no right or wrong place to start guys it's just you know where where are you what have you tried what do you want to do um, diet is definitely the easiest place to start that you can often do on your on your own uh, testing helps to give you some very quantitative numbers and tell you if you're reacting to things like your immune system's reacting to foods or or bacteria or parasites you know infections and, and environmental chemicals. And that helps you to very specifically change things that's, that could be driving your problems. And, and that's, you know, that's also valuable, but there's a, there are a lot of different places to start. No right or wrong place. It just depends on where you are. So anyway, I'm going to get back to exercise. And, um, and then what, what, I've, what I'm going to do is get in the sauna here in a minute. But I appreciate you guys, and I hope this helped you out. I'm sorry I can't respond to all your comments. But I will look at them, and I'll have my staff check them out too. And see, um, you know, just just we'll look through, and I'll see if I can't record some videos on some of these different topics. But if you guys like this, then please do share it. That's the way I'll know that you're you want more videos like this. And I'll keep doing, you know, I'll, I'll try to do one a day or so, and and just on a particular topic. I'm gonna try to keep them a little shorter than this one. I know I went really long, but um, you know, the the thing with this is one topic leads to another, leads to another, leads to another, and it's kind of like a a rabbit hole. So I'm trying to break them up into individual pieces so that you can. You can better understand like what what uh, what you might want to consider doing first, and how you can kind of think through a process of you know helping yourself if that's where you are. So um, so anyway, I appreciate you guys. Just let us know. Definitely let me know what's going on. Post your comments below here if you um, if you have a, a topic of of interest. You know I've recorded hundreds, guys, hundreds of videos. So just you can you can find them on our Facebook page, our YouTube page. Um, there's a lot of different videos so um, on, on a lot of different topics and you can just go to like our uh, Facebook's page our Facebook page the, the office of Dr. Brad Shook go to the videos tab and I think you can search and just put in your keyword you're looking for and you can find tons of different videos on the topics that I've already discussed that'll probably help you but I'm gonna be doing more of these and trying to get some interaction with you guys where I can help answer some questions but you know some of your questions are really tough because they're very complex right you ask a question and there may not be a um, there may not be a very simple answer for it, and it, there could be a ton of different explanations or possibilities for your for your question. So anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful day today. Hey Karen, yeah, with the high antibodies, um, I've got a video on that. Uh, the, the antibodies are antibodies are are controversial as far as like what they mean. I'll tell you, um, I've got a great I've got some great videos on antibodies. If you'll just go to like the office of Dr. Bradshaw, hit video videos tab and then you can just type in like antibodies the keyword and you should find all the videos where the one of the main topics was antibodies I hope that helps I would love to explain it to you but it'll take me a good five ten minutes um, and uh, so guys just post your questions here please do share it if you want me to record more videos like this and um, just know that we're doing everything we can to try to help you guys out okay so I hope you have a wonderful wonderful day and I appreciate you joining me today thanks Hey guys, Dr. Shook, thank you for viewing our videos. I hope they help you out. If you want to, just subscribe to our channel somewhere here. You can watch a video um, that YouTube's actually selected for you, so hopefully it'll help you out. If you need any other information or resources, just look in the description. We've got links to our website, to our nine lab test guidebook, and everything else that we do. I really appreciate you, and I hope you guys have a great day.